I'm going to start uh, VCO Office, and um, we're going to look at a uh, lab building that um, was uh, recently um, out for bid by several contractors, and um, they were able to explore and understand the scope of the building by, uh, by looking at the building model. You can see that we incorporated not only one, but uh, multiple models inside the VECO environment here. We've got architectural model for the exterior, mechanical model separately, and structural models. So the VECO environment will also help you consolidate quantities from, from different models. If you have a um, Tecla model for structure from a, from a steel fabricator, you'll be able to bring that in and uh, use that in your estimate as opposed to relying on the uh, design model only for uh, taking of quantities. You're going to be also be able to use mechanical models for more accurate estimating. And um, we're, we plan to expand the number of formats that you can bring into VECO Office. Right now, um, the most popular BIM formats are available, as I said earlier, Archicad, Revit, and, uh, and Tecla. Once you uh, bring in the building model, you can start exploring the uh, quantities. And, and you can see that VECO Office actually helps you go through the steps of the process, of the model-based estimating process, by providing you with a palette, with a workflow palette. Uh, first you open the project, then you manage the, the building models, and now we're going to start with taking off the quantities. So as I take off the quantities, VECO Office will calculate the uh, quantities for the different design elements and will break down the quantities based on family names of the, uh, of the Revit model. If the architect um, sets up the family names exactly the way you estimate, it, it will help you facilitate the model-based estimating process because you would not have to look and understand, look for the different definition and understand how the model was created, you will have the ability to drill down to the various um, quantities as, um, as you would drill down in, uh, in your on-screen takeoff or um, manual processes. In this case, uh, if we just look at uh, the exterior stud wall and I um, and just highlight it and isolate it, I can immediately see what's included in that particular bucket, in that particular uh, heading. And I can see that um, if something's not included or, or if something's missing, uh, I can either change that inside VECO office and uh, reassign some of the elements using a uh, paint mode, or I can have the architect uh, you know, change the model as, as necessary. It's a lot easier, however, to make changes here in, inside VECO office. So if I, if I decide that this wall here is not going to be brick, but it's going to be something different, but it's still classified as brick by the architect, I could remove it and add it to another uh, takeoff item and make sure that I have a, an accurate takeoff for every single element type. As you go through the different uh, components of the model, it helps you, again, understand the scope, understand what's included, and that's always uh, a, um, a challenge in the, pro in, the, in the process of taking up quantities from a model because the estimators need to be 100% sure that they're taking off the right quantities for the estimates so that it's, it's accurate. You can also see that the VECO office will differentiate between the element types automatically. So for example, here we have a wall type, um, and that wall type has uh, a couple of different quantity types. So for example, let me just go back to the exterior wall. When I look at and isolate this element uh, and look at the uh, quantities on one side of the wall, they're automatically highlighted. If I look at the quantities on the other side of the wall, they're automatically highlighted as well. So the algorithms that we implemented inside Takeoff Manager and VECO Office will help you generate these quantities, calculate these quantities automatically as opposed to you having to go and manually select and, and define those quantities on your own. Uh, if we look at a column element, the column element has different quantity types 
and it has, um, in this case, top surface, bottom surface as a separate quantity, as I uh, mentioned earlier. So it's, uh, it's a lot easier to isolate and understand what's included and what's not included in the estimate. Once uh, I go through the different elements inside my uh, estimate and understand exactly the uh, element types that are uh, included in here, I can start using these quantities for uh, costing and for, for creating a budget. So for that, I'm going to go into the uh, plan cost environment where, where I can easily interact with um, the spreadsheet that will help me build the estimate. When you start with a project, as I said earlier, you might not have this much information available about the project itself. So you could help, you could start by just setting a budget for the different, uh, sub, different headings of your estimate. In this case, we have a budget of uh, $50,000 for the substructure. We have a budget of, uh, of um, 500000 for interiors, et cetera. So you can start by um, defining budget either manually here or just define a budget based on uh, a building footprint. As the design becomes more detailed, you can drill down to the next level, to the component level, and um, you can see that now we have the ability to differentiate between strip foundations, foundation piers, uh, footings, and, and slab on grade for, for the foundation elements, for the substructure. And as we do that, we can look at the various quantity types uh, for these components. For example, for strip foundations, we're going to use the, the volume of the different foundation elements. When I click on the formula editor, it will help me analyze the model and select, as you can see in the formulas, the different foundation elements and their quantities, their volume quantities, that will be summarized in, in my quantity field of my estimate. I can also include here different uh, waste waste factors, but as you can see, we included a consumption factor of uh, uh, 105 to make sure that uh, we account for waste. And using a $50 unit cost, we calculate a price of uh, approximately $20,000, $21,000. As you break down the estimate even more, because let's say we felt self-perform foundations and self-perform concrete. Uh, we can include concrete pump, uh, the rebar, the equipment, um, the material, and also the labor cost in here. And um, with the unit price, calculate the appropriate breakdown of that particular line item. As we go more and more detail, as we go more and more deeper in the estimate, you can have the, uh, the numbers refined and then rolled up to the next level and then rolled up to the next level and rolled up to the top level eventually. So as we calculate the actual cost based on the detail, you can see that we have activated, we have activated most of our uh, subcomponents, most of the elements that we use for calculating the detail. And uh, based on the roll up, we have a $49,000 estimate as opposed to the $50,000 uh, initial target that we set based on just a, a unit cost or a, a square foot per unit price. That also will help us track the variance between how we're doing in terms of our current estimate against the target that we initially set, and that difference is going to be displayed here in the variance uh, column. You can see that these little arrows will show you whether you're over or below the target cost. In this case, for substructure, we're slightly below the target cost, but for um, Shell, for example, we're above the target cost by uh, $30,000. So cost planner will give you instant feedback of how you're doing against the different targets that you set for, uh, for the different uh, budgets and headings in, in your own estimate.